Hey everyone, yesterday we got a great demo from Peter Hahn on how he draws from imagination. This is part two. Let's get right into it. Let's go to another piece. Let's use the same content though. Maybe I'll be the boring, change the angle of view this time. Uh, let's go this way. How about let's bring the head up forward. Let's bring the tusks up. I don't want the tusks to be bigger this time. I felt like what I played with was safe. So I kind of want to like play with it. Let's add like double tusks and stuff that's coming out of the snout. I'm kind of reminded of animals that I've seen. Uh, obviously warthogs and razorbacks are great. Uh, some of the, one of the ugliest pigs I've ever seen is the babarusa in Indonesia. That thing has a crazy horn that comes up around and it actually will grow a curl around to its cranium. Some will actually even pierce its own skull. Now that I have that in its place, let's kind of wrap some harnessing around it. The ears are little sharp things with the strong coarse hair as it comes out. And again, I could have built this with construction, but I don't need to. I have a general idea of what I want, which is him standing towards the camera. I'll put maybe the figure of the dwarf in the back. Things like the anatomy, because I've studied animals similar to it, I know where to place the information. And of course, if you guys have watched, I'm sure you have, of Proko's lessons, a lot of the stuff on YouTube, uh, the fundamental practice of building the proportion of the human form, uh, that is areas of where you should begin. Proportion is the number one key thing. Because in drawing, if it's misproportioned, any element of rendered detail sitting on top will not save it. It's still a bad drawing. Let's put a mount going this way on top. Let's put some like gear, satchel stuff behind them. Totes and bags and whatnot, building the shapes. After doing 20 years of this, a lot of you guys will think, man, how much time will I need to get to a level where I feel confident enough to also execute the information that I want? There's no judgment of time. When people ask me, if I spent two years drawing, will it get good? Yeah, but watch out for your expectation. Will you, meet, you know, match that? More than likely not, unfortunately, because there's no true answer to it. And I tell people this all the time. You're more than likely not really gonna get what you want out of the time you're spending because there's no way to judge it. The only thing that you have to rely upon is then how much true passion you're putting behind it. Because then the time doesn't matter, okay? It might take you two years to get a certain point, but guaranteed it might take you more. Are you gonna be willing to commit even if it took you 10 years? Because now you're trying to consume artists that you're seeing around here in Lifebox that have 20, 30 years of experience and cramming it into a few. It's impossible. So how long have I been drawing? Since his age? <laughs> 10, you know, maybe? Since like, my first memory of drawing is like five, maybe? Professionally, how long have I been drawing? Since 2005. How long have I been drawing in this method? 10 years, straight on. So it's taken that long for me. And so that's why when people come up to me asking, I need the answers, tell me how to actually get there. There are none. The question is, how committed and passionate are you? Because it takes just that one element. That person next to you may have fully committed 100% of their life into it. If you haven't, if you're still dabbling, you're not gonna make it. It's gotta be to the level where you're literally waking up every day, sleeping, thinking about this. Because I am. And even then, there are people out there that are a hundred times better than me. <laughs> and that's crazy. But that's also great. Because it shows you that there are other people out there that are excelling, and that's a goal that I can match up to. And I wanna now be better. It may not happen, but I'm definitely gonna shoot for it. Guys like Proko over here. Constantly pushing, constantly stressing using all his time and effort every single day into it. It's just that, it consistently to work. You know, that side of heart and hunger and, and you know, the, the, just the want of it is unfortunately something that cannot be taught, but it can be sparked. And that's why you're here. And that's the first right step. I never get tired from shows and stuff like this. You know, people ask me, it's like, how do you maintain the energy to keep going all day and every day? And honestly, I'm actually more of an introvert. When I was in college and schools, I sat in a room by myself and drew every day. I had a small core group of friends. I never liked going out. I never went out to bars, didn't drink, uh, never did anything. I was so focused on just drawing every single day to the point where my head literally was crooked. I would have neck pains coming out of art center, visiting hospitals, because uh, I was physically hurting from drawing. Was that the best thing to do? 
I don't regret it, but I would adjust it. And I always recommend that even stepping outside, getting out with friends, enjoying those moments is a learning experience also. It does help with your drawing because it gives you stories. It gives you comparison. You work with other people. Now, did it help me to grow exponentially if I drew that much? It did, but I also burnt out. And all that growth, I lost just as quickly. And it was a constant back and forth cycle. So take a lot of breaks. Take, give yourself a moment to absorb. I was only pushing too hard. And anything else, what was happening was that I was treating this like a fight. And I was aggressive about it. I was stressing. And it was affecting my health. It was affecting my relationships. It was affecting my friends and families. And it wasn't helpful in a long-term run. I had to let that go. And now what this is, is not a fight. This is a partner. This is a dance. I know the steps and I can be creative and move outside of it if I want to. So then the process of doing it is the most enjoyable thing. The mental aspect, how you approach it. Because I always tell the students again, same thing, I'm going to tell it again. I don't care how you finish this drawing or any drawing that you produce or a piece, painting, design. I am interested in how you start. What's your mindset? What's your first beginning thought process? How did you strategize? How do you feel about it? And if you start on the right foot, at the end of it, no matter how it comes out, you'll appreciate that moment. You'll learn from it. And you'll look, and look forward to the next drawing. Then you're producing constantly. You never burned out. I never hit a wall where I've burnt out in 10 years. And stuff like this can happen. I can talk and draw easily. Drawing is as easy as talking to me. The speed maintains, the confidence maintains, and I'm already brewing up ideas for next one, the next drawing. Here's the perspective, I'm gonna go this way. This direction, this direction over here, back over here. Horizon line's gonna be right here. I can go perspective this direction, back to that direction. Let's put the dwarf over here. He's gonna be looking off into the distance. As I have this perspective going down, how it's being built is here, zero, thin, as it wraps around, volume, as it goes back up, another direction, volume. So this curve is now gonna match the curve of that ellipse on this side. So now I've figured out my plane of the perspective as this crown, as I've drawn from this one, is now a part of the construction to help me with the curvature as it's going above the eye level. Here's his hair, he's going around it, overlapping on top. Again, stuff like this can be a great guide. Put that in a box, there's a perspective plane right here. Putting this in a box, perspective plane going that way. So these things I'm able to visualize in my head, but I can construct minimal things to help me understand how to apply it directly, where it's not necessarily a construction visually for many people, but it is a construction to me. All right, we're gonna put the arm down this direction, the sleeve of the shirt. As it's coming down close to the horizon line, the belt will be more level, slight curve. As it's going down in the perspective, his foot placement, going down a little bit further possibly. Being a dwarf, I'm gonna make him a bit heavy set on the bottom, the pants coming out, with the boot. And now I have everything structured in place. There's the camera, hammer coming down. Taking this same pose, now turning it in space. So stuff like this, I'm always learning from still. Every drawing, I pick up something bit by bit. And it's not any more of large leaps and bounds of understanding and growth. It's this small grinding and crawl. And in the beginning, as you guys learn methods and techniques, you exponentially grow. Your understanding, your worth just improves dramatically. But eventually what happens is you begin to familiar, get familiar with those techniques. Then it's about that small grinding to hopefully get the small nuances kind of perfected or at least more familiar and confident. But the problem is a lot of students are not patient enough and you don't see a fast enough growth and you get disappointed. You don't like that you can't see a return and you want that immediate satisfaction. And then people give up or they stop drawing or they stop doing something and they take a break and then they come back to it. Then it's starting over again at that point. Which one do I like better? It doesn't matter. The idea is that the process of doing it again was satisfactory. 
even if this doesn't get pushed to a more finish than this one, I still learned something from it. I still made a lot of mistakes too, and that's great. Now, this piece of paper with the drawing on it doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't have value, but at the same time, I don't hold it preciously, right? Because the thing is, the memory and the doing this, I can recreate it instantly. So the experience is the most important part of it. The final result doesn't matter, because it can always be better. Quick question. Do you find it's easier to determine the proportions of something with more muscles or wrinkles, or is it easier if it's something smooth like a dolphin or a human with no muscles? The details don't determine that. It's, it's the overall shape, the primitive shapes. And of course, if you're talking about proportion of the individual thing, we observe the real life stuff to give us context of it. Now, of course, in association with the multiple elements within the scene, I can say if I made this buckle way too big, the functionality of that, how this dwarf would work with it, may not work proportionately. What if you drew the dwarf with tight clothing and less wrinkles? Well, that's the surface information of the material, right? And so that then has to be explored through observation. Looking at real life things and studying from them, knowing how the mechanics and also how fabric works around the form. How does it wrinkle? How does it stretch? If it's loose fabric or tight fabric? You know, how do you then use the lines and the shapes to express those areas properly, right? So study base is always observation. People ask me, how do I get over burns and how do I get over information and things I don't understand? Look at real life. Everything I created here for you is inspired by something that we can observe. Now the only thing I'm doing is changing proportion. A dwarf is shorter, stockier, heavier, right? That's proportion, but he's still using the same human anatomy based on that structure. So anything you guys create, don't think about the word of originality. Use nature to give you something of a fresh take on it. You can mix and mash stuff also, but I haven't done that. I've taken things that are directly from nature in our own world, and we can then alter it. And then story adds to it too. Do you work differently when you do traditional versus digital, or do you have the same process? Yeah, so the question was, do I work digitally with, uh, or differently with digital or traditional methods? I do actually to some degree because I use digital mainly for client work. If, if I'm doing a lot of personal work, do I use digital? I actually don't. Because a lot of the personal stuff I create are things like illustrations or comics, uh, print stuff, and books. And I like traditional mediums for those things. But if I'm working for a client, I gotta get that stuff done on a deadline, but they also might want changes. So digital then makes more sense because if I finish this and they said, no, we don't want that, we don't like this, change this, change this. Well, now I gotta redraw the entire thing. So obviously digital has the main advantage to it. But in terms of working method of how I draw, uh, no, it's not any different. I still construct with shapes and I can also go directly towards things knowing what I want from them. And of course, if I explore in variation, I know the degree of level of finish I need to go to and I'm able to then execute as much information or variation I need to in that amount of time. So it does differ slightly. Again, here was the one before. Obviously, I was very excited to draw, so I put a lot of information on top of it. This one was more explorative to think about the camera, the, the perspective, the angle, all those things. So my intention here was not about trying to finish it. I want to see how well I can pose it. I want to turn them in space. So what does it all boil back down to? It starts from the very beginning of what I just said. Clear intention of what I was trying to execute. Knowing how much time I had. What did I want to communicate? What did I want to say with the work? What helped you come to that decision? In terms of the subject matter? In terms of the subject matter, uh, that one is very hard to explain because my brain constantly spews information to me. And some things are inspired by observation, some things are inspired by stories of things I've read or seen before, and there's just a backlog, a, a deep well of experience of things that I've seen before. And so the deeper the well, the more your brain has to like pull from and just shoot at you. So why did I decide, to decide on a dwarf in fantasy? I just felt like it. <laughs> My brain said, hey, draw this. That's cool, I'll draw that. It's just fun. Now if somebody said, hey, draw this for us, then my brain would also do that. It would go through a Rolodex of information and pull all the things that are necessary to that subject. Now this took me many, many years to build this. And I've been working professionally in the game industry for seven years in studios. And at that time, my skill set was you know, good enough, but over the years, I built it even stronger. So it's a constant growth, and every year I see growth, even now. From the previous year's work, I actually think the drawings are great, but I've actually gotten better already in a single year. Next year, the work I'm doing now, I know that I can even do better. So it's been exciting because of that. 
So again, it's not about the present growth, it's all grind, but give yourself time and patience. Look back in that year and you'll be like, yeah, I've grown. That creates the positivity. That creates the drive. That has the hunger. Anyways, I wanna thank this guy over here, Proko and all the group. He's already awesome and very supportive. So I'm just thanking you guys. So we're closing up here in a minute. Yeah, yeah. So we did two pieces here. And uh, if you do share anything online, please tag Proko, tag me. Uh, you can find my business card up here, my social media, Peter Hans Style on Instagram. And thank you guys for joining. Thank you guys for hanging out. Appreciate it. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed the demo. And I hope you enjoyed this year's 12 Days of Proko. Thank you, Peter Hahn, for coming by our booth and doing the demo. Should I record more demos like this? And if I do, who should I invite to the Proko booth at next year's Lightbox Expo? All right, everyone, enjoy your holidays.